Okay, here we are at 26th of February, 2022. Uh, I am uh, addressing this issue from, um, from the mountains uh, in the Alps, which has always been a good place to, to uh, think about and discuss you know, things and just kind of clear your mind and help relieve your, uh, the psyche of whatever those things uh, are that might be of, of interest or concern to it. Um, and I would like to address today the recent passing of our good friend, Mr. Mercado, uh, Ricky Rick. I did not personally know him, but I did not need to know him. We know our friends by feel. Uh, we know who our friends are. Uh, spirit knows. And we are certainly composed of light. We're beings composed of light. Spirit is a form of light, another form that, take, that, light, that light takes. So I didn't necessarily need to know him personally to have understood um, that he was a friend of mine. So on his behalf, I would just like to address some of the concerns that have come through to me um, as a result of his passing. And uh, before I begin, let me say that I am not a kind of, I don't consider myself a missionary. I am not concerned with who agrees or disagrees with me. Um, I don't say that in a flippant manner, just in the fact that it's not important to me whether my view is shared by anyone other than myself. It's just I'm sharing my perspective and I certainly would not wish to live in a world where everyone thought monolithically and everyone thought like I did. That would stunt my growth as well. Um, so uh, let's also be mindful of the fact that there are always people looking to be triggered um, because righteous indignation or being pissed off is a, is a kind of a drug. It is an adrenaline rush. It provides a lot of cortisone. And uh, so let's, let's acknowledge that it doesn't matter necessarily what subject you are discussing. There's always going to be someone looking even for an excuse to be, to be pissed off. So you get that rush, that rush of energy. That's a normal part of our human existence. There's nothing wrong with it. We have to take all of these things into account. So uh, trigger warning in case what I'm saying does not match up with any of the programming that we have been collectively exposed to so far as a human race. Uh, I do not believe in races. I believe there's one race, the human race, and the rest of us are pretty much composed of bickering tribes, jockeying for position and doing what it is that tribes do. Um, so, in, in, that, in that spirit, let me address the fact that as some of the spiritual cliches have, have spoken to us uh, or have said to us, life is but a dream. Um, life is a multi-dimensional experience. Life is layered as our physical lives are, so is life itself. Uh, I do have an understanding of the multiplicity of, of, of lives and lifetimes and the fact that uh, there are multiple dimensions, there are multiple, uh, and what, what is the word I'm looking for? There are uh, parallel <laughs> lives and things of that nature. Let me also explain that um, our, our political identities are largely given to us for the convenience of those who would control us. That's uh, nothing new. I identify as a native. I consider myself a native son. I come from Aborigines. We took in black genetics. We took in white genetics. Uh, and so for political convenience, I will not consider myself as anything other than a native uh, who has also been blessed and tasked with carrying other genetic bloodlines that I might also be able to work with and through those bloodlines for the purposes I serve on earth and as I try also to serve others as I serve myself. So I say that to say this, we natives do not believe in death, we don't teach death. Western religions and Western philosophies teach death often, but not always of course, as a controlling device. And um, it, I'm sure, serves also some legitimate purposes or we wouldn't be so attached to the concept. 
Uh, and so all of these things we are, we are we're working with, we work through until we come to some understanding that suits our own sensibility. And ultimately that's all that matters is that at some point of the many, many things that could be true, it's most important that uh, we find that way of thinking which most suits the sensibility we're carrying and carrying our life through. Basically what makes sense to us is the most important truth of, of the moment. And um, so having said that, my, 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 my native blood, we, we don't believe in death. We only believe in life and all things. And life is, it penetrates in all things. All things are composed of life, even dark matter. Even the darkest thoughts, the darkest ways are still composed of the matter of life, the raw materials of life. And we are allowed these dark thoughts. We are allowed our depressions because depression is an energy. And depression is an energy like anger that does seem to have a lot of, a lot of purpose. Ultimately, or we wouldn't, so many of us wouldn't struggle with it. It's a very powerful energy. And it's a very transformative energy. So transformative, in fact, that it kills many people. And if it doesn't kill us physically, it kills our spirit. But the spirit is a wonderful thing because the spirit is composed of light. And you can knock the spirit down 100 times and 105 times. It's going to keep getting it right back up. It shape may transform as it goes. As each time it rises, it might be transformed into a different type of spirit. But it is still important for us to realize that it is still spirit. Nonetheless, and if it has been transformed by these things which affect it, there is a possibility that it was kind of looking to be transformed by these experiences. Um, ultimately, that's up for every heart to know for itself. And I say that to say that we have so many assumptions about death that somehow we wind up in a void and we are composed of light. So there's really no void where light goes. Wherever we go, we take that light with us and whatever form that that light takes. So it's kind of uh, despairing for many people to think that we just wind up in this void, just as it's despairing for many people to believe that there is any hell other than the one that we're living through now. And um, the, the truth is there is no hell for us to go to. There is only the hell to come from and to come through because if this isn't hell, then I don't know what is. But we work through it. We work with it. Because we're here for a reason. We're here for a purpose. At the wonderfully uh, symbolic age of 33, Mr. Mikado determined that his life was so full of density that he did not wish to continue in, with this chapter of his life. But the good news is that it's not necessarily something that you can let go of. If an energy is powerful enough to have transformed you into another space, it's not something that you can easily let go of. So it is not a negative that he's still going to have to work with his anger and depression. It's a good thing because mercy dictates that until we come to conclude why we were working with such a powerful energy, we don't let go of it. It's not in our best interest to let go of it until it brings us to the light that we are. And with that light comes mercy. With that light comes the compassion that perhaps we deny ourselves in this existence because we're in a much denser existence. But life is layered. And so the truth is most people don't really even realize that they died. What they do is wake up to the next level, the next layer of what this life itself is. Okay, it would tend to take something profound to even provoke the memory or understanding that, wait a second, I think I died. What will tend to happen is they will wake up in the next life and they will turn it maybe perhaps to a partner that's there or to someone and say, you know what? I had the strangest dream. I had this dream that I had this completely other life I was a very successful and renowned and respected artist. And uh, then things got dark, and then I woke up. The great majority of people going through that experience, by acts of mercy, will not know 
that something tremendously tragic happened besides a dream. Because what happens is you die to this life and it's like a page flips. The same story continues. The same characters are there. But you're waking up now into a different reality that is almost the same reality. The difference being it is not and it can't be as dense as this, as this particular reality. Our third dimension is dense. It's hell. It's a, it's a kind of form of hell, if you will. It's us taking light into hell and transforming it and transforming hell as we transform ourselves. So um, the idea of hell, of course, I'm borrowing from a more of a Christian uh, uh, sense, a pejorative sense, because uh, obviously there are other cultures that also have a similar um, description of sometimes these dark places where we can inhabit and where souls walk through and come through. And as the great master Robert Frost said, the only way out is through. So, but that's the good news. It's because the next layer of where he is, which is a lighter dimension, he will find it easier to work with this anger and this depression. Perhaps he will find more instrumentation in the form of light, meaning compassion. Compassion is a great form of light. Mercy is a tremendous form of light. The ability to see yourself without the heavy hand of judgment coming down upon your skull, oh yeah, is a powerful, powerful tool. It's a powerful form of light. So the ability to be able to look at yourself and address your malady, to address your depression, to address your anger, without holding yourself personally responsible for its origin and its root, is a tremendous, tremendous gift to, 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 to have and to work with and to work through. Because as I said before, it would kind of be unmerciful of life for him to wake up in the next life completely free of any responsibility towards the thing that he chose to transform him from one life to the next. But the good news is there is much more available to him in that space where he now is that when he determines that he is done working with such dense and dark matter, it will just be a decision of letting it go. And then walking into the light becomes that reality. You don't just die and walk into the light because first of all, we are the light that we would walk into. We are that. There is no other light besides that we require, we need. We are children of a very, 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 very powerful creator. And light is the matter that we were, we were created from and by. And through and with. So at the point when he has determined that he sees, he, he sees the light, is the point where he can let go of the energy that transformed him from one place to the next place. And sometimes a change is as good as the rest. So while he's still working with it where he is now, he's working with it in a place that's not as mean spirited, not as dense as the place he just left, he just transferred from. So all that really happened was, from one life to the next, he transformed his energy to another place where he would find working with that energy, surrounded by a lot more understanding. Most importantly, his own understanding. Because he, this place we are, this third dimension, or these levels of the third dimension where we are, is very dense. It, is very, it can be very, very dark. It can be also full of all the wonderful things that we understand, that are also forms of light. So this is something that I, I wanted to address. It's also important for people who've lost loved ones to realize that you haven't abandoned them. You're there where they are too. We, these, these are, there are parallel universes. There are parallel lives and worlds. This is a layered experience. So like I said, most people don't even realize that they've died. They will just see it as having woken up from a very bad or very interesting dream that will tend to continue with the same cast of characters, with the same people that were important to you. In the life you just transferred from, those same pe people have representational light and forms there as well. Because that's how love is. Love transfers. Love travels. They say you can't take it with you. That's completely some bullshit. You can take what matters to you, okay? 
if you've earned wealth in this life through the very many ways that life manifests, uh, wealth manifests in life, not just in the form of money, but love is a great form of wealth, then that wealth will follow you. This is one of the reasons behind why the Egyptian pharaohs were buried with all this stuff. The understanding was that if they were buried with a, a piece of gold, a gold urn, gold is a living thing. Energy of gold is alive. That's a, another form that light takes. That form of light will follow them. That's what the Egyptians understood. And that's why they were buried with certain things so that they could be accompanied by those energies since they earned those things in that life. They can take those things with them. You might not be able to take your money with you, but your money was just energy. Your money was just a result of what you, you did to put yourself in a place of receiving that form of light, that form of energy that some call money, which is, as I said, just one of the many, many, many forms that the endless possibilities of light can take. So, of course, you can take it with you. If you loved your mother in this life, your mother will also be there in the next life. Okay? So take, take light of what I'm saying, please. Because many of you mourn the loss of those who you believe you have failed. But you are there with them where they are now. You are there with them too. Okay? And many of us choose, however, to take the depression left, the density of energy that was left in this dimension, and we will take it upon ourselves to finish working through this energy. It often takes the form of heavy grief. This is sacred work. It isn't to be frowned upon. It's very sacred work to take upon someone else's burden and to continue with what you believe is a necessary burden to take. We must remember that every man, every person, regardless of what they look like or how they come at you, Every man has his cross to bear. There, there, are, there are no exceptions. If you are in this motherfucker and you are here to be seen and experienced, it may not be seen by me. It may not be noticed by me. But for sure, you have a cross. And our compassion for others comes without understanding that even if you can't see it, even if they've very cleverly disguised it, even if they've gained a mastery over it or with it to some degree, they still have a cross that they're working with, or we wouldn't be here. There's a purpose for our existence. And each of us have taken on what has come from Pandora's box, what has fallen upon us, as well as what our ancestors have left us to continue on with. And we work with this. We work with our cross. And the mercy and compassion for another being is to accept that whether you like them or not, whether they've mastered themselves in their presentation of themselves or not. They're still working with the cross. And that cross might be heavier than we can, we can understand. It might be heavier than the cross that we are working with and through. And that we should try to take heed in judging a man or judging a person for the size of the pill that, that accompanies their existence. Because the, the, I, believe it was, um, I believe it was the American philosopher George Clinton that said the bigger the headache, the bigger the pill. So whatever a person's addiction, whatever their remedy, it is only the weight in the matter of what ails them. And, and we must be willing to at least show compassion and much less judgment about those people that are carrying through life their burden, who are carrying through their life their cross as best they are capable, often without a lot of understanding around them, often without a lot of mercy around them. And since they don't have often this mercy around them, it is very difficult for them to draw upon the mercy within themselves. And let us be more willing to, to, to accept that death is not the end because I, I come from tribes and I believe this myself. There's no death. There is no death. There is just continuation. There is just the next room we walk into. I believe it's our, our, our Christian heritage that says in my father's house are many mansions. And sometimes we just go from one room to the next. And it would not be wise of mercy itself to allow us to so easily release things which vex us. 
because then we would be cheated out of the knowledge that comes from having worked with and through vexation. And this is why so many of us carry so much pain. Not because we are weaker, but because we are capable. And in the spirit of Mr. Mikado or Ricky Rick, I, I, I wanted to speak upon these things because it was his self-determination that determined that where he had been, where he was among us, was not the right place for him to continue working through this great cross. And that this cross has not abandoned him, nor will this cross abandon him until he has gotten a full weight and measure of why he was carrying that cross in the first place. At that point, the cross becomes light. It becomes a burst of light, which he himself is, and which he himself becomes, and then can walk forward. Then you walk into what our version, our vision of heaven is, because then you are prepared and ready to have gone to such a dimension where we can't enter holding on to such heavy crosses. But this is what life has given us for. These dimensional fields are given us to work through these things. And this is the mercy of our Lord. This is the mercy of time. And this is what time is. Time is just a dimensional field whereby we might work with and through our vexations, our curses, our crosses, to, to understand that everything, even the darkest thing that vexes us, is just a form of light that has been denied our perceptions. Now, speaking of light, I'm wearing rose-colored lenses. I believe in color therapy, uh, which is another way of saying that I have indulged myself in many pairs of sunglasses of all the colors I can find them in. Because when I want to change my perspective, I simply change the color lens I'm wearing. I also have very dark lenses because sometimes, let's face it, our light, light is our father. We come through and from light. We are composed of light. But even light in moderation, even light can be too much. This is why many of us, if we take hallucinogenics or certain things, are blessed if we are taken through guided meditations because too much light can blow your mind. It's like too much light can blow a fuse, can blow a bulb. I love light, but I probably don't want to live in a room with 200 watts, okay? Neither do I, am, am, am I very fond of 60 watt bulbs because for me that light is too dim. We find the measure of light that suits us best and onward we use this light to project ourselves through space time. So darkness must be appreciated for the backdrop it allows the light to shine and to illuminate. But light must also be regarded and respected as something that we, we deliberately don't don't stare into the sun. We're taught not to stare directly into the sun. Why? It's just too much damn light. It's going to burn out something. So everything in moderation, even our attempts to, I don't smoke nearly as much as I used to smoke. Because smoke is fire. Fire is a form of light. And I don't need as much fire and light as I used to require when I was getting to the point of trying to understand more of my own darkness. So I, I smoke much, much less frequently. I often go weeks and months without smoking if I don't feel the need to, as much as I do enjoy it, and I'm reminded of this when I do. But that's only because I don't need as much of what I used to need because my understanding has been brought further along about my purpose and my existence. Much like my ancestors, we treat death with more, a bit more of a celebratory a bit more of a celebratory understanding. Grief is something that we all need to go through when we feel it or we wouldn't be feeling it. So it's something that we should show great respect to. It honors the dead. But what honors the dead even more is A, realizing they're not dead and celebrating the life that they were willing to struggle through. Celebrating what they left us that they, they could share with us while they were in the same space as us. So on behalf of my good friend, Mr. Mikado and Ricky Rick, and all of the people who were greatly touched by his existence and who will continue to be touched by the light he left in his wake for us to experience. He's not dead. He's just gone to the next place where he can more freely be supported in his desire 
to understand more fully why he chose to carry this energy with him that transformed his life in the first place. As it will continue to transform him, as it continues to trans transform us in his wake, by coming to understand it more. So I'd like to thank you on this 26th of February, 2022. I'd like to thank the spirit of the angels and of uh, what my very, very limited understanding of the Creator is for being able to share this with you. I'm truly, truly blessed to even be in a position to have people who are willing to listen to my take and my perspective. And if you don't feel this way at all, no problem whatsoever. It's just important that we come to accept and embrace what makes the most sense to us and what is most liberating to us. For sure, what we call death is liberating. And now he's just in another space where he can feel what he needs to do on behalf of himself and his spirit better and with more support around him as he wakes from, as he goes from this waking dream to the next waking dream. Thank you very much. I love you.